Alright, hello everyone. Um, for the first part, I've been doing great. I was a little worried when um, UTEP had those technical difficulties um, a few weeks ago. Seems like everything worked out, um, you know, especially with the, the d extended deadlines and, and everything, so that kind of helped me out. Um, I still got my stuff done on time, but uh, no, this, this, this really helps when, when professors do that. And uh, on top of that, you know, I've still been uh, keeping up with my courses and, and working part-time. Um, I finally started working out a little bit more. I'm still working on it, but um, it feels good. A little time to um, to myself just to, you know, work out. And, you know, it feels good, um, feels healthy, and um, makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing a little bit more. Um, instead of just coming home and doing homework and, uh, you know, just relaxing whenever, whenever I'm not doing homework. Um, before, for the composer, I chose to to research was John Corleano, Corleano, and uh, he seems to have, you know, started with like very humble beginnings. Um, he like moved up the, the music industry. Um, he worked as like a music programmer for the for the New York Times and, and for the New York Times radio station. Um, and he also he was also a music director for the WBAI. Uh, um, so that's really cool. You know, he kind of com comparing to where he ended up at the end of his career, you know, he kind of started not at the bottom, but he worked his way up in a way. And then, uh, but following that, he, he went on to produce recordings for like the Columbia Masterworks in 1972 and, and 73. Um, you know, and then following that, uh, he, he even began moving up farther more by teaching at like the Manhattan School in 1971 and all the way till, to, to 1986. Um, and then, you know, teaching at the Juilliard School and the Lehman College. Um, and he even became like, you know, but he was a very distinguished professor, according to the article. And, um, and yeah, it's after that, um, I guess that's when his he jumped started his like composer career because uh, Corleano he received a, like a whole list of awards that you know included the uh, the Guggenheim Fellowship. Um, he was he has two Grammy awards for best contemporary composition, uh, composition of the year award from the International Music Awards uh, for for operas such as like the Ghost of Versailles, Versailles if I'm saying that right. Um, he also has the, another Academy Award for, for his score to the, to the film, The Red Violin, which is one of the, well, the score he did for that movie, that's the one I chose to, um, describe, you know, that one kind of, kind of captured my attention a little bit. And then, um, he has a gold medal of the National Arts Club and the President's Medal of George Washington. There's just a whole list, um, reading, reading his article, uh, there's just a whole lot just about him and uh, his accomplishments. That's pretty much the bulk of what his whole um, article was about. And I don't know, it's cool to see that considering that he started, he didn't just make music. He he kind of started as, um, you know, from from somewhat of the bottom and like working his way up the music industry, you know, being a music programmer for, for a radio station and, and stuff like that. Um, but as for, for the piece that I, I observed, uh, was the the red violin? Um, you know, kind of gave me some like Godfather themes, and uh, uh, especially at the beginning because it's kind of like sad tones, and um, you know, hearing his last name gives off like the Italian authentic authenticity in a way. Um, but yeah, as for the, as for the the red violin piece, it continues. It begins with you know very um, like minor tones, and and it kind of keeps that consistent, and it continues with sounds of like that are very like sounds of consonants and you know nothing crazy or climactic um let me see uh anyway so like the minor tones they continue to display like the godfather themes that but like they emote like an emotional sense as well um this could be like due to like the high pitches that the violins portray and um, or emit and yeah that, that really kind of adds to that to like that italian sound like that kind of sad um that sad tone um, in the in the minor tone as well, uh, and you know, uh, on top of that, this was a great piece, um, and I, you know, I appreciate it more. I'm pretty sure we all can um, when we learn like the history of the composer. I think that helps us like focus on the music better um, because that's we know the composer a little bit better, and now hearing instead of hearing their pieces in general, um, we can kind of relate to them in a way because we know uh, we know who's playing it in a way. Um, as for like what this reminded me of, this kind of reminded me of um, 
Astor Piazzolla um, because it kind of evokes like cultural music. And I appreciate this more like when we learn the history of general background of a composer. Um, I guess it's just hearing their last names makes it sound makes the music sound more cultural. And um, even though you could hear it more with with Astor Astor Piazzolla, um, you could kind of hear that with with uh, you could kind of hear that with Cor Corleano as well. And I think I think that really shows in their music as well. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching.